What's going on? So I took these two screenshots and I made this YouTube thumbnail using Photoshop. You don't want to miss out on this tutorial because I'm going to be walking you through step by step on how I made this YouTube thumbnail. If you're new to Photoshop or if you've been using it for some time, this video is going to show you some really cool tricks to make some awesome YouTube thumbnails. Let's go ahead and get right into it. We are going to be making a thumbnail, but I need some images. So what we're doing is we're going to be going over, well actually what I did is I went over my stepbrother's video um, that he already sent to me and I grabbed two screenshots that we're going to be using today. So with that, we're going to jump into Lightroom. Let's go ahead and get in there. Okay, so I'm here in Lightroom. I'm on the import screen and I'm going to grab both these images right over here. Click and drag those in there. Simple as that. And then we're going to hit import down here in the bottom right corner. Okay, so this is what I have in my library for Lightroom. Now we're going to go over to the develop screen. If you don't know, know much about Lightroom, this is where you actually make the edits to your photos. And so what I'm really focusing on here for this first image is actually my brother right here. We're going to be cutting him out in Photoshop, so I really only care about what I'm seeing right in this section. So taking a look at the image, what we're going to do here is I do have a filter for him that I use quite a bit. It's a very rough and tough type of texture slash preset. Um, we're going to click on, I call it Dignation right over here. These, these are all my presets that I have. So we're going to click on that one. As you can tell by looking at it, it's very, we'll call it blue, maybe purpley. And so I, I kind of know that when I put this filter on, so I'll make the adjustments now. So over here in the right side of the screen, we have all these adjustments that we can make. And what we're trying to do right now is adjust the, the tone of this image. As you, as you can see, it is blue. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to bump it over to the, the right here. We're going to go into the yellow section to kind of warm up the image. And what you can really do is just hover, hover over the scroller right here. And on your keyboard, just set the up arrow. And that will actually bump it to the desired warmth that we're going for. So I'd say right about in there is not too bad. Now we're going to go down to the, to the, the tint down here and it looks like it's a little purpley. You can kind of see it in his skin here and maybe in the sky. It's just a little purpley. So I usually back this one off the purple and go more to the green, which tends to get more of a natural look somewhere in there. Okay, so that was the before and that's the after. As you can tell, this image has got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, rough texture to it. Um, I do have it preset to be really high up. I do bring it down, which will definitely smooth out his face a little bit, which that is actually how he really more looks in real life. So we're gonna go with that right there. And that's pretty good for this one. So let's go ahead and export this. So you just go up here to the top and you go down to file export. And we're just gonna call this junior for now. And it doesn't really matter on the file name, that's just all we're using for it. Okay, so let's go into the next image here. So here we go. So this is going to be the background image that we're going to, going to be, be putting behind my brother. So um, as you can tell, this isn't a bad, a bad image for just screenshotting it, but we can definitely boost it with the colors and the contrast and that sort of thing. So once again, we're going to come back over here to the preset. Like I said, it kind of gives it that rough and tough texture since he's in the excavation industry. It just makes sense. So we click Dignation. Um, again, up here, it always makes it a little bit purpley, so I usually bump this down by clicking the down arrow as I hover over the, the toggle right here. And you kind of see that gives it more of a natural look. We can try to bump the temperature more in the yellow to see if that's going to kind of warm the image up. You have to be careful because it will definitely yellow it out. As you can kind of see right there, especially here in the grass, and it just kind of got like an overlay of yellow, so it's a little bit much than I would like. So we're gonna bring it back down maybe one, and the concrete looks more natural. So for this one, that's basically it. I do leave the texture on this one. I like to leave it up because it really brings out the texture and the concrete and the machine and the dirt, and it just really works for his channel. So again, up here, we're gonna go to File, Export. And we'll just call this one Junior for like I said, the name doesn't really matter because what we're going to do is take this into Photoshop where we will then give it the correct naming. 
All right, so we got those exported. Now they're here on my desktop, as you can see. So here's the old ones and here's the new ones. So, okay, so now we're gonna go into Photoshop. And so this is actually the last thumbnail that I did for my brother. Um, this is the final product. As you can see, we have an outline. I cut them out here and I highlighted the rocks that he was hitting with the hammer and it just gave it a really cool effect. So um, we need to get the actual image size that YouTube wants for the thumbnail. So up here, I just want to image, image size, and it shows me the, the dimensions. So what we're gonna do is 1280 by 720 um, for, the, uh, for the dimensions. So we're gonna hit okay there. We're gonna create a new one just to start you guys out on a brand new, um, brand new Photoshop. Here we go. Um, it looks like I already have one here, but what you could do is just come on over here and put in those dimensions. So this one, the width would be 1280, the height would be 720, and just make sure it's set to pixels right here. And you could also change these to inches, but YouTube goes by pixels, which a lot of programs and platforms use that. So just go by pixels. And so I'm just gonna click this one for here for right now. I'm gonna hit create, and here we go. So this is where we're really starting with Photoshop. Um, this is just your background layer. You're basically going to be stacking layers on top of this layer. So this layer doesn't really matter so much. It's just there as, like I said, as a foundation for your image. So how we're gonna get started here is we're going to be starting with the background image. So that would be the, the tractor image. And guys, there's a lot of ways you can import into Photoshop. I just like the click and drag method. It's just, it's just how I work. It's just kind of a bad habit I have. And so uh, with that, we'll get started. So as I drop this image into Photoshop, um, it's going to want to know how big do you want this image. So that's the first step you want to do is you want to size this image to how big you want it exactly where you want it, right? So as you can see, I my idea here is, is I want my brother to be somewhere right about in here. And he's gonna be taking about a third of this canvas, okay? So he's probably gonna be covering the machine a little bit and covering this hole over here, which is totally okay. The font that I'm gonna have is probably gonna be down in this general region because you want your font to be about a third of the screen, roughly. So that, that size for this image works for me, so we're gonna go ahead and hit that for that one. So that one's set. I can still move this around and do whatever I want with it, but that's just the general size I want for this image. Okay, so. Now we need to go grab the other image of Junior here. And as you can see up here, we have the first layer. Well, we have the background, then we have the first layer. And as I drag in the other image, it puts in another layer, it puts it on top, right? That's what we're wanting. Okay, so here we go. Um, as you can tell, he is pretty good size in this image already. Um, good rule of thumb is you usually want the subject to be about a third of the canvas size. Um, it's just good for visibility, likability, and, and clickability in your thumbnails. Another rule of thumb is you usually want to have a face in your thumbnails. It's just more attracting. So as you're making your thumbnails, always try to be in your thumbnails. Okay, so there's there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, like like right here, we can see how big he is, but we don't know really like what he's going to be covering up. So there's something we can do here, and that is going to be, we can drop the opacity on this layer. So just make sure you're on your layer. So we're on this one right here. Go up to opacity right here, we're at 100%. So just drop it down to, you can't really see quite yet. So right about there. So now we can see what's going on behind him, right? And now I can make the adjustment of the size of how big do I want him, right? So. I would say right about in that general region will work. And also I have this red bar down in here from the screenshot, which we don't want. So it's probably gonna be right about there. I'll probably drag them off over here so we can see the tractor a little bit. And that works for me. And we're gonna drag it back up to 100%. Okay, so this is where the real magic is gonna start happening for this thumbnail. So what we're going to do is be cutting out my brother, all the background around him. So this is gonna go away and all this will be gone. Now there's a lot of different techniques you can do to get the same result. That's the cool thing about Photoshop is there's a lot of different ways to get the same result. So how I like to do it, and for me, this is how I can be the most precise. I feel like it gives 
the image a nice natural look. And so this is what I recommend for you. And it's also probably the least technical. Now it is a little time consuming, but I'd say all the other methods can be just as time consuming, just depends how fast you are. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab the eraser tool right here. See this eraser tool. Okay, so now that we have the eraser tool, as you can see, as I'm hugging around, it's got this cannot use symbol. The reason why that is is because this layer is not editable. We can't do anything to this layer until we rasterize it. So I click like I'm going to try to um, erase part of the image, but it says I can't. So this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Edit contents will no longer be available. Rasterize the smart object. And yes, that's what we want to do. So go ahead and hit OK. So now you see we have the erase tool, right? So now we can actually start erasing what we want to erase. Okay, so how we're gonna get started here is we can pick the size of our brush. You can do it in two spots. You can do it up here. Um, you can come in here, you can change the size, and you can also change the hardness, right? We're just using the typical circle right here. And um, I want the hardness to be as hard as I can because I want a hard line as I trace around him so it's not so it's not too soft, right? I don't want it to be soft where he's like kind of fading away into the image. I want it to look like we cut him out of this background. So we're gonna go with a hardness of 100%. As I begin, I just have a, a really big brush just because I'm trying to get rid of a lot of area. Another way you can change the size of your brush is on your keyboard. It is the bracket, which I'll leave that here as you can see it right now. So I hit that button and I can adjust the size, okay? So what we're going to do is start erasing all this, okay? Coming in here, just getting rid of the bulk of what we really just don't want, okay? Just cutting them out. There's a lot of clicks in here, but this is how it is, okay? So now as we start getting more into the technical stuff, we're going to zoom in uh, with your mouse. You can just, you know, Zoom in with two fingers just to get closer in. Use your space bar to click and drag around if you're looking to do that. Um, I am on a Mac, so I'm not exactly sure what that would be for um, HP and Dell and that sort of thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my brush size down. And what we're gonna try to do is really just get into these corners, right? So I'm super small, right? I'm just trying to get through these crevices, which gives it that realistic look. And that's pretty good for now. Um, I'm not too critical on the actual edges itself, especially if I'm going to outline the, the figure, which I will be doing. So being super critical on these lines is not too important if you're outlining it with a stroke, which I'll show you that here in a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna start drawing around my brother here until I kind of missed right there, that's all right. Just come back up. The cool thing is I can give him a beard trim, no problem. Make his beard look super sharp. Maybe clean up that jawline. Okay, come around. And I could be using a larger brush, just depends. Depends on the technique. Um, you'll kind of pick up your own technique. Um, but based on teaching principles, I'm just trying to show you the, the correct way of doing this. Okay, uh, for clothing, again, I don't matter, I don't care too much about what it looks like because clothes can be very free flowing and so they're not always a perfect edge. So you don't have to be too critical on that, is either, on that either. So um, like right there, I kind of took out of his shoulder a little bit. That's totally okay. You won't know the difference. People won't be seeing that as they're looking at the image. Now his hard hat can be a real trick because these are straighter lines. You really can't mess up on these. So what I do here is I make a really big radius that is going to give me a straighter line. So what I do is I, I get close to the heart as I can and I click and then I click and I just kind of smooth out that hard hat as I'm working down. As you can see, there's still a little blue in there. It's okay if you kind of cut him off a little bit you don't want there to be uh, the skyline because then you can kind of tell it's just not natural looking 
Another thing you can do is just zoom in. Just keep zooming in. Now you can see where you kind of messed up here. You can see you just, just nibble off a little bit and a little bit. The reason why I don't use the pen tool is because you still have to get in super technical and super close to get the same result. So to me, there really is no difference. It's just more of a preference of how you want to cut the subject out. And that's why I have just landed on this and it's just this is just what works for me. Okay, there's that. Come around and I'm just freehanding this. I'm just drawing them out with my mouse pad. And you'll you'll just get good at that as you do this for as long as I've been doing it. So there we go. To give you an idea of what this looks like, that's the cutout so far. You can also leave the, the background here. What I did is I just removed the layer over here to see it on white, which seeing it on a solid color will definitely give you an idea of like white. You still need to erase, so we'll just leave it here for now. So like I said, I just unclick this box over here and I can just keep, keep going. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in again because there's a technical spot right up in here. Um, like that. can just size it up and just take all that out and as we put the stroke on a little bit later you'll you'll see how much stuff I actually missed and that we'll need to go back in and just clean up and it's just a good way of telling um, what you still need to take care of now doing this method you're not going to get the straightest of lines um, it really depends how clean you want this to be. Um, this is a very quick and easy process just to get a subject cut out. If you're going for super clean, super edgy cutouts, um, you probably would want to lean towards the pen tool. And see, so I cut his hard half off a little bit, but what I'll do is I'll just come up here and I'll just smooth that out. And really, you would not be able to tell any difference. So we're gonna get super small, cut out the ears. This is where I feel like the realistic part of this really comes in. I feel like these little uh, details right here is what makes an image um, look real or look not real. Okay. And really, I'm being, being really uh, over the top here on my cutting out. I don't really spend this much time in the, this detailed part of it, but just to show you guys of best practices there you go okay so here we go we're gonna sharpen up that beard a little bit so as you can tell I just took out quite a bit that should be all right there now he's got a strong jawline perfect okay so close just kind of go with the flow here bam done done and done oops okay so I just had a mess up there in order to fix a mess up or redo it, just go Command Z, that's for Mac, or you can go up to Edit, Undo Eraser, which is Command Z right here. Okay. All right, so there he is. He is all cut out, check that out. I missed the spot right there, and I missed the start there, okay. So, here we go. Now we're gonna put this back behind him. So, look at that, look how good he looks, right? The thing is, is he's really not standing out from the background right he's kind of blending into the background so what we want to do is make him stand off in front of the background so he gets the attention but you also know what he's doing because there's this tractor behind him so there's a couple things we can do one we could just desaturate this desaturate the layer beneath him which will lighten it and then now he's popping off the screen but it also washes out the back right can't really see what's going on, it just, it just doesn't really give a strong appeal to the image. So we're gonna bring this back up here. What we could do is we could put a layer on, and I've been doing a lot for this for his thumbnails lately. And so we can, so we're here, we click on the square tool, right? Or the rectangle tool. We wanna come up to here, and I've been using yellow for him just cause it's, he's in construction, it just kinda makes sense. I also leave the stroke off. There's no stroke around this rectangle, okay? 
So now we're just gonna come over here, we're gonna click and drag, and bam. Now we have a yellow background behind my brother, okay? Um, it could also be behind that image, but that's not what we want. We want it to be right here. So it's click and drag so it's in between your subject and the background. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna see the background. So this is where it gets really cool and interesting. So what I'm doing is I'm dragging the the desaturation or dragging the, the saturation down so I'm desaturating the image and really like we're not using much of the yellow we're just trying to give it like a tone to the image which now you can see he's really standing off compared to what's behind him now let's take this away you see it was kind of blended but now he's kind of you can kind of see him better and in fact I'd go a little more than that like let's go like 15 that just kind of adds a cool little style to it now another thing that we can do is we can make him still stand out more and what we want to do is grab the gradient tool let me do this for you guys all right so I'm gonna grab the gradient tool right now we're on this black transparent one right here which I believe it was this guy okay now what I want to do is add a layer and I want that to be over the yellow actually let's put it beneath the yellow and see what it does so I'm gonna click over here on the left screen what I'm gonna do is try to darken behind my brother so he kind of pops off the page a little bit so I'm clicking and dragging to about the middle you see how I just kind of darkened behind him here we'll do it one more time okay so you see like it kind of it darkened the yellow so it's more yellow behind him which is going to make him stand off the page okay we probably go from here to the corner and now you can kind of see him better, right? So we're gonna stick with that. So we're going to go to fonts down here, click there. And I know for his thumbnail title, he was using um, digging. I like to do my fonts separately because I tend to, uh, do different things to each each line. I need to bring you up top here. Okay, but now we need two other lines. So we it's gonna be called digging post holes. So we have digging. So what I'm going to, need to do is I'm gonna click Alt, click digging and drag down. And you see that blue line means I'm creating, a, I'm basically, I duplicate, I duplicate the layer above. Okay, so now we're gonna click here. So now we see we have two. I'm gonna double click that, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change this to post. And then we're gonna do that one more time. Alt, click, drag, down. Okay, and now we see we have a third. And then I'm going to call this one holds. Okay. So the size of this obviously is really small. I could have resized digging and had it be a lot bigger and kind of eyeballed it, but what I like to do is just Make all three. I'm gonna. I have the first one clicked. I'm gonna click Shift and, and click the third one, and that's gonna grab all three, right? They're all three right here in a row. And now I'm going to resize to kind of get an idea of how big I really want these. That's not too bad. Maybe a little bigger, somewhere in there. Okay. Right. So now, there we go. Digging postals. Okay. No. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to pick colors. I've been landing on whites and a gold texture. Um, we're going to start with post holes first because those are probably gonna be the white ones so double click post there the color box is up here and um, we just want a white color so there we go and then same thing for this one beneath it and what I could have done is I could have picked the colors first and then duplicate the layers and I would have the correct layer for each that's another way of doing it. again Photoshop has thousand ways of doing exactly the same technique is this it's just a different way of doing a lot of things so this is kind of the longer way of doing it if you want the same color 
So double clicked holes, now I'll come up here, but now I have the eyedropper tool. The moment I click on this, it gives me an eyedropper tool. Well, just click the, one, the last one you did, which is the white, and bam, there we go. So hit okay, that's done. Now what we need to do is we need, I wanna put an outline behind this so this pops off the page. So go up to post, double click post, we have stroke. So hit stroke, let's show you what I'm talking about here. Happens to be a white one. So let's go black. We're gonna just go black. There's black, okay. And then we wanna adjust the size of this probably like eight. Eight looks pretty good, let's do eight. And then down here, holes as well. So double click holes, hit stroke, which it should be exactly the same as the last one, which it is. Beautiful. So there's post holes, awesome, right? I do have an idea with this that we're, we might actually make this look like it's coming out of the hole, the teeth going to the hole, which is going to be pretty neat. So anyways, what I want to do is I want to get a gold texture. I use this for its thumbnails quite a bit. So I have this layer over here and the other screen. So I have two screens going on here or two projects. So I'm in the, 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 old, the, uh, the last one I did. I'm going to grab this gold texture. So I'm going to click and hold it. I'm going to click and drag it over into here. Now I just dropped it into here, right? So what I'm going to do with this gold texture is I'm gonna make it be the color for digging. So kind of like what it looks like here, but it'll be right here for digging. Okay, so put this over digging, and then you want this to be right over digging. So what we're going to do is create a clipping mask over digging right here. So click on the gold layer, so it's layer two. You can name it whatever you'd like. So we're gonna go up to layer. We're gonna to go to create clipping mask. What it's gonna do is literally, it's going to mask itself over the font. So bam, there you go. Um, now what we wanna do is we wanna put a stroke around that as well. So you see how easy that was to make the gold texture, right? But you can kinda of tell that the texture looks like it's kinda of blurry because it's too large. So let's go ahead and downsize this probably like right in there. Now that's going to make it look more real and more textured and that's kind of what we're going for. So there is that. Now here's the thing, if I want to move digging and I click here, I can't because what I'm really doing is I'm just grabbing the gold texture up here. If I just click here, still can't because it's just grabbing the gold texture. So what you have to do, you can grab both. So if you hit shift, Grab both. Now you can move it however you want, or you can merge the layer. I don't like doing it because I tend to use the same layer for different projects, so I just it's not how I work. But you could do it that way, or the other option is is you could hide the gold layer, and now you can move it like you wanted to, right? So let's get this where we kind of want it. I kind of want to center these somewhat ish, and then post holes. I kind of want to right about there, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's put this back on. And then I might leave that gradient off. I think I like it better looking like that. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to, we want to, so now what we want to do is we want to delete this T so it makes it look like it's coming out of this hole. Um, before we do that, I want to add a drop shadow to all of these, right? So if I go to post, there's a drop shadow down here. I do have two of them because I have two different styles of drop shadows. So I forget which one is which. So we'll click that one. As you can see, there's drop shadow. If I click on the other one, it's more subtle, not nearly as much. I think I like that one because I can see it better and just makes the font pop off the page. So now if I do the same thing with the holes on the same one, let's see what it does. Bam, there we go. And then if I do the, the digging, it should do exactly the same thing. And that just gives it a nice look, right? Now you can see digging better, you can see all those fonts better. Okay, so now let's get a little creative here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to edit this layer or this font. But now here's the same thing is this layer is not rasterized, which means it's not editable because it's a font still. 
as you see over here, this still means it's a font. The moment I rasterize this, it's going to change the symbol into a rasterized layer. So if I go ahead and click like I'm trying to do to delete part of this font, watch what happens. The same thing pulls up, it needs to be rasterized. So I hit OK, now look, now it's an editable layer. So now I can delete all I want, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and try to edit this T, right? Okay, so as I edit the T, you notice something, right? It's also leaving the stroke, which that wouldn't be very natural looking like it's coming out of the concrete here. So actually this doesn't work. So it was a little trick there. So we're actually not going to do this. It sounds like it makes sense, right? But if you had a stroke, you have to work around this. This is how you work around that. So we're gonna go back. We, I just command Z, so I'm back to where this is now a font. Just went back a couple steps. Okay, so what we wanna do is there's a couple steps that we need to do here. Um, you kind of have to understand how layers work. It sounds really complicated, but if you kind of have a, a visual brain, you can kind of make sense of this. So basically what I'm going to do is I need to make this background. I'm going to be deleting this background so it's, so it's going to be overlapping this T right in here. That's the only spot I need this image to be overlapping right in here, which is going to give the illusion that that T is in the hole. So what I need to do is take the, the yellow overlay and the background, and I need to merge these so they're one layer, okay? So I'm going to click on that layer, I'm gonna hit shift, click on that layer, and I'm going to double click right here. And I'm gonna scroll down to where it says merge layers. Now this is one layer, right? There's no more yellow layer, there's no more background layer, they are one layer. Now what we need to do after that is we need to duplicate this layer. So I need another layer, okay? So now we have two, I have a copy here. Now, this is where the illusion happens. I'm gonna take this layer and bring it right up here so it's over posts and it's also over holes, which is fine. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to delete to where we only see the font that we want to see. So, I need to bring my brother back because he's also covered up over here, right? And now, I need to bring in the other font, but I can't see it, so this is where the trick comes in. You're going to desaturate that layer, the copied layer, just so I can see it, right? So I see it right there. So I know that I want that to show because I want it to look like it's coming out of the hole right here. And I know that I want that P to show, okay? And I also want all this to show up here too. And I also think I want this cone to be covering the P, right? Because that's gonna give it a cool illusion. So come down here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out to where it looks like this is right behind the cone, okay? Just like that. And same thing with the G. We'll come up here. And we're just going to like that. And you can tell like I'm not super critical on this because the cool thing is this illusion really just just keeps the eye looking at the overall look right it's not like people aren't looking at like well it looks like you messed up there and it looks like you messed up there people aren't really looking at that when they're looking at this kind of stuff at least at least the majority of the public will not right now if you're an expert in photoshop you know exactly where i made all these cool little tricks and stuff like that so okay so that is what it looks like right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the opacity back up so this is what it's actually gonna look like and so there you go now we have a T that's in a hole and we also have a P that's behind and the G that's behind right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to paint and then we're going to make sure it looks like we're on this uh, pastel palooza you could use really any kind of texture this is the one I've been landing on right now I'm not sure if you have that, just, just look around, there's a bunch of brushes in there. Okay, so once again, I can't I can't draw on it because one, I don't have a layer picked. So I just want to create a new layer. Now this is just gonna be like my drawing layer, okay? And we'll just leave it here on the top because I kinda wanna draw over things. So I kinda just make this up and freehand this as best I can. I usually like to put an arrow that points to my brother, like, hey, take a look at me, I'm over here. And I just kinda do like a hand drawn Arrow, right? You can maybe do another one like, like this. 
and draw an arrow, right? And we'll put one more arrow in here just to kind of give the effect that this is what we're focusing on. We're digging holes, so let's make sure that they can see the hole. We're just gonna draw an arrow down in there. It looks like the illusion, like, you know, like the machine is going down in this hole. There we go. Okay guys, so we are almost done here. We're gonna do the last step and that is going to be putting an outline around my brother right here. And this is really gonna make him pop off the page. So I did take out the gradient layer behind her as before, because I think the outline is really gonna help this out. So let's go ahead and finish this last step. So what we wanna do is we wanna come over here. I hope you guys can hear me my Mac is, it's heating up because I'm working a couple programs right now. So the fan's going, so continuing on. So we're going to click on my brother's layer here, right? So this is what we've clicked on. Going to double click, and we're going to go to stroke. And as you see, it put a white stroke behind him. If you click right here, you can kind of see what you're working with. So we're at a size eight, and I really like the look of this. That's a good width, it's a good size, and that's what we have. There's a couple ways you guys can get the outline around your subject. This is probably the easiest and less technical way of doing it, so I recommend it, especially for beginners. But now here's the thing, as you can take a look, we have these weird dots, and this is what I was talking about before. When we were cutting out my brother, I was missing these spots. I wasn't completely erasing where I need to erase. The cool thing about the stroke is it shows you where you missed, right? So what we need to do is just go through here and just edit and just delete what we need to delete. So I just get a small brush here, I'm on the erase tool, just get a small brush and just keep deleting like we were doing before. Just basically redrawing over the lines that I already did and just kind of cleaning them up. And here in the corners I like to get really small with the brush and just kind of bring it in. Same thing down here, down here, down here. Just retracing in that corner, just get super into that corner to make sure it's nice and a nice clean line. And then over here it looks like I missed a little bit more. And that's usually all that I, that I normally miss when it comes to this. It's really not a lot to clean up. I'm right here. That's about it. All right, guys, so that is the final product. So let's go ahead and export this file. A lot of people think when you save an image, you're actually saving the image so you can use it for later. But actually what you're doing in Photoshop is you're saving the project. You're saving this whole project to where you can come back in and edit these edit this, these layers and the photo itself. So you're not actually saving an image to use somewhere else. So how we do that in Photoshop is we go to File, Export, Export As. I like to export in PNG, which is right here. There's a couple other options like JPEG. Um, that's, we're gonna leave it just like that. So we're gonna hit Export down here. We are going to rename it. Um, we'll just name it as his thumbnail title, which is Digging Post Holes. Save it, and that is it, guys. And right here is the final product that you guys can use on your YouTube thumbnail. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will definitely respond back to you. Um, like this video if it was helpful and definitely share it and uh, guys if you like it and you want to see more subscribe and I'll keep posting these if they help you out. So with that have an awesome day.